Deuteronomy chapter 7. There's a verse in this chapter I'm interested in. I was reading this week, and, and this verse, I came across it, and it just blessed me. And the singing tonight has blessed me. The testimonies have blessed me. And what a blessing, I get to read a verse that blessed me. And uh, appreciate the goodness of God. But we'll begin our reading in verse number 1 to gain the context of these verses. Verse number 1 says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou, and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. Let me just stop right here. This is a different God than the one Joe Osteen promotes. The one this feel-good crowd today says, you know, God's a God of love, and God will never say anything to hurt anybody. God said to these seven nations, I'm going to give you this land, you destroy them all. And then he says, break down their altars, burn their images, all their idols, get rid of all of it. I mean, he makes it pretty clear. And he says, don't even make mention of them. Uh, you say, preacher, why do you on occasion start naming names like Joe Olstein or start naming uh, uh, false things and what's going on in some of these churches so you know to destroy them out of your life? I don't, I don't want God to be angry with me or my household. I want the blessings of God. Amen. And let's read on. That's not the verses that bless me. I know you all think I'm mean, but that's not the verses that bless me. Verse number 6 says, um, uh, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep, your, uh, keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations." and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to them that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for the good fellowship leading up to service tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. Lord, my heart's been blessed to be in church tonight. And Lord, you're a good God. And hearing how good you've been to your people just reminds me that the Bible's true. And Lord, if we put you first, you can't help but be good to us. And God, you have been far better to us than we ever deserved. And Lord, I'm glad we're always welcome back home. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. Lord, I pray that the Word of God would certainly uh, find a lodging place in our heart that we might not sin against Thee. Lord, may it take root and grow in our life, and God, may we ever draw closer to God. 
God send revival in these days. Lord, our country, uh, Lord, certainly it what she once was, but she can be better than she's ever been if she'd turn her heart to Thee. Lord, I know that the country's not going to turn to you until churches start turning to you. And God, I pray that, we'll, Lord, we'd be a church that'd be known for being revived and serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, bless. Bless those working with the teens on the other side. And God, bless their efforts. Lord, those teens are facing things in this day that we didn't even dream of when we were their age. And God, I pray you'd bless them and help them. Now, Father, make the word of God come alive to us and help us. And Lord, we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for what you do. Use this unworthy vessel. Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the book of Deuteronomy, we find that the Lord is giving the final commandments to Moses to give to Israel before they cross over into Canaan land and they receive the land that he promised them. Now can I say that when they go there, it's not going to be easy. They're going to face giants. They're going to face opposition. And can I say, uh, it's still not easy. They're still facing opposition in their land. Uh, but you mark her down, neighbor. Uh, God promised all that land to Israel, and Israel have it. Uh, and uh, listen, there's going to be a, a fight for it uh, until the Lord Jesus comes back literally this uh, earth once again. We come back with him on them white horses, uh, and the Lord will settle the score for all those that fought against Israel. Uh, but here Moses is getting some final instructions. Now notice some things. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, there is a requirement, verses 1 through 3, and uh, what the Lord basically says uh, in verse number uh, 3, that thou shalt not make marriages with them, thy daughter thou shalt not give to a son, nor his daughter thou shalt take unto thy son. Uh, the Lord is setting forth a requirement of separation. Uh, can I say God hasn't changed his mind about that? Uh, uh, the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians six seventeen, uh, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Uh, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Uh, will be a father unto you, and ye shall be uh, my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Uh, uh, can I say it's never been God's intention uh, for his children, uh, uh, his redeemed, uh, uh, to hang out with the swine of this world. Uh, he wants us to live above the rudiments of this world. Uh, he doesn't expect us to live like lost people. Uh, 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 Brother Donald said it in his testimony. Uh, uh, his family now doesn't know the man he used to be. Uh, and what a blessing. And that's how the world ought to see us uh, after we come to Christ. Uh, they ought to never see the man we used to be. Uh, they ought to spe see the man that God's changed and God's touched uh, and see that God is our God and we love him uh, we're to be a separate people just because the world says it's right doesn't mean that God says it's right mm. I can't help it the world is picking their pronoun God already picked it you're either male or female mm. very simple I can't help it if the world says it's okay for a woman to marry a woman and a man to marry a man God said it's an abomination I can't help it if the world says uh, it's all right to have some liquor. Uh, Bible says strong drinks are mockery. Uh, uh, the Bible makes it clear that liquor is not to touch our lips. Uh, hey, I can't help it if the world says uh, it's all right to party with your friends and still go to heaven. God said it's not. Uh, and there's a whole big difference between what God says and the world says. But unfortunately, a lot of churches are trying to bring the uh, the standard's a little bit closer together where we can hang on to the world with one hand and hang on to God with the other hand. It don't work that way. Uh, you know, I, I, I've only been studying this book 48 years now. I don't know it all. Half's not been told, and I learn more every time I read it. But I want to tell you something. I've looked. I cannot find any gray areas. It's either black or white with God. It's either yes or no. Hmm? And yet uh, we live in a... Uh, a day, an age where everybody wants to make God out to be uh, 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 just the man upstairs. No, he's holy and he's God. Huh? Can, let me just, in case you hadn't figured this out, I'd rather please God than the whole world. Are you listening? Huh? So we see a requirement to separate. Now, let me just say this. I, I better get on this. 
God didn't tell us not to have friends with people who are lost. How can we win them if we're never around them? But God told us not to live like they live. Are you listening? But what he's dealing with here, what he deals with in 2 Corinthians, he's dealing with their religions. God never ever told us to lay down our doctrinal beliefs and hang out with somebody who claims to be Christian. Mm -mm. We're to separate. Jesus said that he didn't come to bring peace but a sword. What sword was he talking about? Doctrine. Doctrine divides. I'm not backing up on what the Bible teaches to have friends. Mm? Mm? I don't go to these uh, community prayer groups. Mm? And the Bible says, how can we come together unless we be agreed? And if they don't believe the book, how can I come together and worship with them? I can't. And so there you go. That didn't cost you anything. It's not my notes, but... You know, people think, preacher, I've got a friend that's lost. I'm not supposed to hang around them. No, you you can hang around them and invite them to church. Let them find out there's some more friends they can have. But don't sell out Jesus for a friend. Hmm? We see the requirement. Now notice the risk. And this is why it's very important. Verse number 4 says, For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. It's a dangerous thing to let your precious little darling. Did you make everybody mad? Nobody's sitting with you. Here, I'll sit by you. Huh? Now, this is a pretty sweet little girl. Now, if you don't tell her she's pretty and she's sweet, there's somebody out there that will. She is. She's a pretty little sweet. She's got a little ornery in her, but that's okay. I kind of like that. She's a tomboy. Uh, but why in the world would you let this pretty little girl or two, these two handsome boys or these three handsome boys... I'm being good to you, Owen. Uh, I'm just teasing you, buddy. You're my buddy. Or this little pretty girl or these other precious children in here. Why in the world would you allow them to start dating somebody who doesn't believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven? Hmm? Why would you allow them to hang out with somebody that wants to take them away from church? Now, I know when they're grown, you can't make those decisions for them. But you can help develop those decisions in them while they're little. Hmm? Let them know the perils. Let them know uh, uh, the snares. Let them know the poisons. Uh, you wouldn't let an infant play over the hole of a snake. I hope you wouldn't. Bless God, I wouldn't have play over the hole of a snake now. huh? But hey, uh, why would you let something uh, as uh, fragile as emotions uh, and all that goes on? And by the way, let me just help you, Mom and Dad. This isn't my notes. This isn't going to cost you anything. What in the world's wrong with you letting them date at the age of 13? They're not even smart enough to know how to put deodorant on at 13. Uh, and you're going to let them mess with that dangerous thing? Uh, Hey, there's a lot of emotions and a lot of things that can get to all mixed up. Uh, all of a sudden, if the boy breaks up with her, ain't I pretty enough? Uh, 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 wasn't I good enough? Uh, 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 or uh, what if the little girl walks out on him? Uh, 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 I, I'm not special enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not good enough. Uh, why let them deal with all of that at a young age? They're going to have to deal with that long, uh, long enough uh, as they get older. Uh, but hey, uh, you're playing with fire. If you start letting them uh, hang out with somebody, that'll take them away from God. Mm? Huh? You say, preacher, you're so hard and you're so difficult. And you're... Well, I am. All I can say is, all three of mine are grown. They're still in church. And all I can say is, we didn't let little boys hang around her she had two big brothers that played football and a mean daddy one boy come to Christian and said can I get your sister a valentine he said I wouldn't suggest that <laughs> but all I'm going to say 
is she's got some pretty high standards today. And she sent some down the road because they weren't as interested in God as the Bible teaches us to be interested in. And I say, hallelujah. Uh, 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 Jordan's done the same thing. I say, hallelujah. Huh? I didn't pick their mates for them. He did a pretty good job right here. I didn't pick his... I mean, uh, we got the sweetest daughter-in-law in the world. Uh, 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 hey, but if you train up a child in the way she go when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Hey, and it will not cause you to have a broken heart, friend. Uh, listen, I'm, a, I'm here to tell you this world is an emotional basket case. Uh, it is absolutely messed up. And, and, and I, I, where did it all come from? When we was young, it wasn't called bullying. You know, somebody come up and smarted off. You just popped them in the nose and went back to class. It was over. Now, Lord have mercy. You got to fill out all these forms and you got to go to all these counseling sessions. You got to deal with all this stuff. Uh, and I understand it because there's kids out there that get their hands on weapons and go shoot up schools. I mean, this thing's gone insane. But do you know how many young people are out there can't even go to McDonald's and order a meal because they're so fragile emotionally because they're afraid that, oh, they're not going to like me. Or they're afraid. I, I'm not good enough for them. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, it's a mess. Hmm? I don't know why I got off on all that. It's nowhere in my notes. Lord, have mercy. But it is where we're at. These kids are a gift to your home, and they're a gift to our church. That's why I spend so much time making over them. That's why we got a youth choir. That's why we do things. That's why we took them to camp. Hey, there was probably some of these kids couldn't afford to go to camp. That's why the church paid for it, so they can go to camp. Uh, and so they can see there's other uh, uh, kids out there just like them in good churches serving God, and they're not the only ones. Uh, and we uh, help build some Christian self-esteem in them. Uh, let them know uh, living for Jesus is worth it, my dear friends. Uh, it's important. Mm -mm. I, I firmly believe a lot of homes wouldn't be in the shape they were in if they'd learned early on to put Jesus first. Amen. Now listen, uh, there ain't a, anybody in here that is so insulated you can't have problems. Mm. We fight a, de a devil, and he'll try everything in his world to jack you up, jack your home up, jack this church up. But I tell you, if you put God first, you'll help yourself when a lot of these things come your way to be okay, all right? Lord have mercy. I ain't nowhere. The risk is your children serve false gods. That's why Paul said again in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I don't know how many, Lord have mercy, I don't know how many I've, the times I've seen young people marry somebody that's not saved uh, with the intent that, oh, they, they'll, they'll go to church with me and they'll get saved only to see the one in church drug out of church. Huh? Right. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. How come we let the, church, let the world set the standard? Why doesn't the church set the standard? Amen. Well, there you go. That made, that made the message go real good, didn't it, huh? We see the requirements to separate. We see the risk. We see their ramifications. Verse number 4. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly? You know why a lot of folks don't have the blessings of God in their life? They're under the judgment of God because they haven't done what God said. You can't sin and win, friend. Mm -mm. There is, you will reap what you sow. Notice the reason that God's so strong on this. Look at verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Isn't that amazing? 
But a clean, we don't think we're holy. We don't think we're worth the powder to take the blow away. But when God looks at us, he says we're holy unto him. He has separated us unto himself. He's robed us in his righteousness. He's bought us with a price, the precious blood of his darling son. And we are holy to God. He said in verse 6, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are on the, uh, upon the face of the earth. Now, we're, we know we're not better than anybody else. We know we put our uh, 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 breeches on just like everybody else. Uh, we know we're not better than anybody. Uh, but hey, that thing that God's put in us has separated us uh, from the rudiments of the world. Now listen, God loves them just as much as he loves us. Uh, God died for them just like he died for us. Uh, it takes the same amount of the shed blood of Calvary to save them uh, as it took to save us. Uh, that's why he wants us to be separate. Uh, that's why he wants us to have the power of God in our life uh, that's why he wants us to be a light to the world uh, so they'll desire him uh, by seeing the blessings of God on our life but if we look like the world act like the world smell like the world what in the world would the world want with that there they got that but if they see something that is so much more powerful than what they have so so much more joyful so so much peace in our life so much happiness, so much love, so much uh, compassion and kindness. That's what the world's really clamoring for. It can all be found in Jesus. But they won't desire what we have if we act like they do. Hmm? I told you all, I, I knew a fellow that was in business, and uh, some Amish people came to their business and was checking it all out. And at a break, he talked to him and said, how, how do you keep your young people? The Amish guy said, well, we lose a few, but they always come back. He said, why, why, why do they come back? He said, they just look at your young people. Hmm? So God help us to let them see something in us that they don't have out there. Hmm? Huh? Now notice the revelation. It's about ready to change right now. You can lift your head up. It's not time to pray and go home. It's going to get better. I'll quit being mean, okay? Uh, I'm just, just telling you what the Bible says. Look at verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Uh, he's telling us we're nothing special. He's telling us we, we weren't the best, we're the least. Hmm? That's what he said to Israel. Look at verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers hath the Lord brought you out of the out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now I know this is written to Israel, but hey, we were bound by the chains of sin. We were bound, uh, but God delivered us and he brought us out of the bondage uh, uh, by his great delivering hand. And we thank the Lord for that. And then uh, uh, in verses 9 and 10, he reminds us of what he's done for us. In verse 10, he shows us our responsibility to keep his commandments and do them. I'm interested in verse number 9 tonight. He says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Thank God he's a good God, he's a merciful God, he's a loving God, he's a God that's faithful and true, he's a God that keeps his uh, commandment to a thousand generations, all those things can be said about God. But I'm interested in verse number 9, right in the middle of that it says, he is God. That's what I want to preach on for a few minutes tonight. He is God. Hmm? People say, well, well, preacher, does God really mean that? Well, he's God. And he said it. And if he said it, that settles it. But he is God. huh? He's not the man upstairs. He's not uh, uh, my big brother. He's, uh, he's Lord of lords and King of kings. Uh, he is the Lord God omnipotent. Uh, he is almighty God. Uh, he is God. God, hallelujah. Uh, can I say tonight, uh, He is God uh, regardless uh, 
of the foe. It don't matter uh, uh, if the world comes against us. Uh, it don't matter if the government comes against us. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, if our flesh comes against us. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, if the devil parks uh, out on the doorstep of our church. Uh, it don't matter who the foe is. Uh, regardless of the foe, uh, he is God. Uh, and I got good news. Uh, greater is he that is in you uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, hey, there's never been anybody ever even challenged him, uh, let alone conquer him. Uh, he is God. Uh, he's the one that spoke uh, and the worlds came into existence. Uh, he's the one uh, that took dust and formed a man and breathed in him the breath of life and man became a living soul. Uh, there's nothing you can see uh, or touch that he didn't uh, create. Uh, he's God. Uh, he's the God uh, uh, that delivered uh, uh, the children of Israel at the Red Sea. Uh, He's the God that delivered the other three Hebrews out of the fiery furnace. Uh, hey, he's the God uh, uh, that delivered Daniel out of the lion's den. Uh, he's the God that opened up blind, blind Bartimaeus' eyes. Uh, he's the God uh, uh, that raised the dead Lazarus, uh, raised the dead son of the uh, widow of Nain, uh, raised uh, Jarius, the ruler there in Egypt's uh, uh, dead daughter. Uh, that's the God I'm talking about. Uh, He's the God uh, that walked up Calvary's hill, uh, uh, carried your sin and my sin, uh, let them nail him to the cross, uh, was suspended between heaven and earth, uh, emptied himself of his life's blood, uh, and cried, it is finished, uh, and he gave up the ghost, uh, and he was buried. Uh, and three days and three nights later, uh, under his own power, got up and walked out of the grave uh, with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Uh, I'm talking about he's that God. Uh, he's the God that founded the church. Uh, he's the God that's the lily of the valley. Uh, he's the God that's sticking, a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, and he's the God that's about ready to step out on the clouds of glory uh, and call his church home. Uh, I'm talking about he's God. Regardless of the foe, there's nothing too big for him. Now, it may be too big for us, but it's not too big for him. He is God. Uh, uh, you notice uh, it didn't say he was God. It didn't say he will be God. It said he is God. Uh, now when Moses was inspired to pin that down how many uh, 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 centuries ago uh, uh, that it was, uh, it was true. Uh, but as we read it tonight, uh, just because Jesus is alive uh, and just because he was the living word and this is the written word, uh, it's alive too uh, and it's still true tonight. Uh, he is God uh, and there'll never be a time he won't be God. Uh, he was a God from the Alpha, and He'll be God in the Omega. He is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Moses said, what is your name? He didn't say, I was that I was. He didn't say, I will be so I can be. He said, I am that I am. He's always a present God because He is God. Hallelujah. Regardless of the foe, He's God. Can I say this? Regardless of the faithless, he's God. Not everybody is going to serve him as God. Not everybody that comes to church on Sunday morning is going to have faith enough to come back Sunday night. Regardless of that, he's still God. Uh, my faith is not contingent on uh, who does or who does not serve God. Uh, my faith is not contingent on who does come to church and who doesn't come to church. Uh, my faith is not contingent on how much money's in the plate uh, or how much money goes to missions. Uh, my faith is built on this. Uh, Jesus' blood and His righteousness. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, he's God. Uh, regardless of a faithless, uh, He's God. Uh, even when you don't have faith, He's still God. He's God regardless of the foe. He's God regardless of the faithless. He's God regardless of somebody else's feelings. Amen. Mm. Now I know preaching like this causes people on CNN 
to lose their mind and have to take nerve pills to go to bed tonight. But I don't give a rip, flip, or bag of stale potato chips what they think. Hmm? He's God. Whether or not somebody's nerves are in the way, doesn't matter. Whether or not how somebody feels, doesn't matter. He's God. Well, you might offend people. Well, if He offends people or the Word of God offends people, they'll have to be offended. But if they get right with God, they'll not be offended. They'll be blessed. Hmm? Uh, but regardless of people's feelings. Now, I never come to church trying to hurt people's feelings. I don't. I really don't. Hmm? I know you think I do, but I don't. I just want people to know the truth. But I've learned a long time ago, I can be on my best behavior. And I still make people mad. So if I'm going to make them mad, I may as well make them good and mad, huh? Amen. Hmm. Really, I'll be honest with you, it used to bother me when folks wouldn't come back to church or folks get upset and all that. Now, I learned a long time ago, God's the one that gave me my, my intellect. God's the one that's given me the understanding of the Scriptures. God's the one that gave me the talent to preach. He's the one that called me to preach. He's the one that planted me here as pastor. God's the one that does what he does. Uh, now, I know sometimes I get in the way of God. Uh, but listen, uh, I learned a long time ago, if the things of God offends people, they're just going to have to be offended. I've come too far to go back. He's God, regardless of somebody's feelings. Now, this is a true story. Miss Annette used to pray. Long before we ever had children, she used to pray, God, do not curse our children because of my husband. She did. And there are times when she cringes when I'm a preaching because I'll say something, and I don't really a lot of times know what I'm saying, but I hear about it. Uh, I don't even have to hear about it. It's the look. I look back there and all of a sudden I'm getting a look and I'm thinking in the back of my mind while I'm preaching, in the back of my mind I'm thinking, what in the world did I say? Huh? But can I say, there's a, a, a lot of folks today, think about it. You do know the greatest generation, we sent 18, 19 year old young men over to Europe during World War II and we won World War II against the greatest army that the world's ever known because we had some men with some grit a lot of them men didn't come back I think on Normandy Beach uh, the life expectancy once they hit land was seven seconds all that crowd didn't come home but we're still waving the red white and blue because they went but I shudder to think with the sissified crowd we've raised in this generation, we couldn't do that today. Huh? We got a commander in chief, so called. He can't even keep ice cream on a cone, <laughs> let alone direct troops and encourage young men to go out and fight for this country. Everybody's so, their feelings are so hurt over everything. Huh? Unless you're liberal. And you're allowed to say whatever you want to, and it don't matter if a conservative's feelings are hurt. Huh? This country's in a mess. But regardless of people's feelings, he's God. Huh? You all know a couple years ago, Mr. Brashear wasn't too happy with me. Oh, well, he can get right with Jesus. But isn't it amazing? Everything I said two years ago has proven to be true. Hmm? Huh? It has been. Uh, all COVID was was a test, first-run test for the Antichrist. Uh -huh. How they're going to overtake America hmm? and it won't take much because people by, and, and let me just where's Michael Jackson don't tell me to beat it I'll slap you <laughs> seriously if you've had two jabs 
and two or three boosters. Why in the world are you scared to death if I've had one or not? That's right. Yeah. I mean, if this wonderful whatever they stuck in people would keep you from getting sick, why are you worried about whether or not I'm, I'm wearing a mask or anything? Yeah. Right. Think about it. Huh? And what did they really put in people? Yeah. Yeah. All I know is a lot of young people are dying. I'm talking 13, 14, 15 year olds are getting blood clots and dying of heart attacks and all kinds of stuff. I'm talking about athletes. I'm not talking about little fat kids built like me. I'm talking about athletes. They're dying on the vine. But lo and behold, if we stand up and say about it, somebody might get their feelings hurt. You remember that medicine that they come out with, that ivermectin or whatever it said? They said, this cures it. It was $3 for a prescription, and then they banned it. You couldn't get it. It was worth more than gold. Right. Well, on the CDC website right now, it says what will cure COVID. It's written there. They just put it up two weeks ago. Evermectin, or however you say it. Huh. Hmm. Now, how many people did Fauci let die because he wouldn't give them the medicine that would cure what they had? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Son, I'm glad I'm my age and not your age because this thing's going to get a mess by the time you get my age. Huh? But regardless, he's God. Huh? I'm glad you trusted in him. I'm glad you know him as Savior. And don't ever forget, Joseph, he's God. Regardless of what anybody else says, he's God. Hmm? And never get embarrassed when some dude walks into the girl's bathroom acting like he's a girl and you tell the teacher and the teacher tells you to apologize, say, no, because he's still God. If it hurts the teacher's feelings, if it hurts the dude's feelings, if it hurts anybody's feelings, uh, I'll go to school board with you. Huh? I will. Huh? I'll, I'll go to bat for you. Trust me, they'd much rather hear what you have to say than what I have to say. Okay? Huh? It's true. I'll go with you. I know half of them up there anyway. They won't like it when the door's open. Oh, they'll like it when they see me. They won't like it when they hear what I have to say. Hmm? Listen. He's God. He's, rega- he's God regardless of what's false. Hmm? A lot of false propaganda being promoted today. Hmm? Uh, uh, there's a lot of false churches out there. I was glad when they just started calling themselves fellowships. The Bible says Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Huh? Thank God for the church. Uh, I love the church. Uh, Jesus loved the church. Uh, hey, what a blessing to be a part of a local church. Uh, uh, but listen, not everything that calls itself a church uh, is a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, there's a lot of false churches. Uh, hey, the Bible even said, uh, uh, this know also in the last days perilous times have come. And it goes on to say, uh, they'll have some heaping to themselves teachers, uh, having itching ears. Uh, they turn away their ears from the truth. Uh, thank God for still churches uh, that are preaching the truth uh, that are lighthouses uh, but there are false churches out there uh, and no matter how many pop up he's still God not only false churches false Christians not everybody tells you that their, their Christian is saved and not everybody tells you they're saved has been saved by the good grace of God it's hard pressed to find anybody that doesn't believe in God, but the Bible doesn't say we need to believe in Him and you need to believe on Him. Right. Need to repent and believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. Right. There's a lot of people believing they were baptized. That's good enough. If you wasn't saved, all you are is a wet sinner. Right. Uh, there's a lot of false churches, a lot of false Christians. Doesn't matter, He's still God. There's a lot of false commitments. A lot of people got false motives for what they do around churches. A lot of them do things so they can be seen. Uh, I'm glad around here the only one that really matters is Jesus. Uh, I'm glad when folks get up to sing, that's not a, they're not getting up to sing to get the attention. 
They're getting up to sing songs about Jesus and point folks to Jesus. Uh, I'm glad the preachers in our church don't get up and pat themselves on the back. They get up and preach the Word of God uh, and they point people to Jesus. Uh, I'm glad our Sunday school teachers point people to Jesus. Uh, I'm glad them folks working with the teens point people to Jesus. Uh, I'm glad Brother Peter and those that work with the kids, uh, they point people to Jesus. Uh, it's all about Jesus. Uh, but regardless of all the false commitments made, he's still God. He's God regardless of the false. He's God regardless of the flesh. A lot of folks have fleshly desires, have fleshly dominions. Uh, used to, the politicians would come to the local churches to get the local churches a, a, a favor and, and see what God had to say about an issue before they'd go vote on it. Now they don't care. They want to dominate the church. I got good news. They can't. Jesus paid for the church. And if they want to dominate the church, they got to take it up with him because he's still God. huh? Can I say even fleshly delights? It amazes me. I announced we're going to have a big dinner here in a couple of weeks. You, you watch and see how many people come out to eat food. And they're more interested in eating food than feasting. I like coming to the house of God and feasting. Huh? He's still God regardless of the flesh. Can I say this? He's still God regardless of the friction. When you rub a cat's fur the wrong way, you don't think the cat's going to like it, do you? Well, i got news for you. Until Jesus comes, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Mm. Uh, and not everybody's going to like what we stand for. And there's going to be some friction on down the road. There will be. I used to tell my mother, it might be why God took her on to heaven. I said, if Jesus don't come, you're going to have to visit me in jail because I'm not marrying two men. That ain't happening. Say, so, well, preacher, that'll take you to jail. Oh, well, I'll preach to them down there. Amen. Captive audience. Huh? Uh, we got a jail ministry anyway. Just might as well make it more than one day a week. Huh? Now, that rolls off the tongue real easy, but I, I'll be honest with you, I really don't want to go to jail. But I'll go to jail before I marry two men. Amen. Not happening. Hmm? Say, preacher, they, they won't let you preach. Well, they didn't call me. So I don't think they can stop me. Amen. Hmm? Uh, listen, there's a lot of... A lot of folks that are afraid of friction. I, I'm thinking of pastors right now that I know that are afraid to confront people. Well, I, I, I told y'all a couple weeks ago, the Christian life is not a kumbaya experience. It's a battlefield. Now, our wars are not with flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. And the sorry, no good devil hates the church and he hates you. And he wants to destroy your life so nobody else can see the goodness of God in your life and get saved. And so it's a battlefield. And my dear friends, it's not going to get better. And there are statistics from battles. There are some that get killed in battle. But regardless of the friction, we need to stand. Paul said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. I'm not backing up on anything God said. You say, preacher, do you really think God would let you go to jail? No, he didn't let Paul go to jail. He didn't let Peter go to jail. He didn't let uh, the other apostles go to jail. Read Hebrews chapter 11. He didn't let folks get sown asunder. Yeah, he did. Because them going through that had a greater impact on the furtherance of the gospel. And again, it's all about God's glory. And by the way, when friction comes... So does grace. Huh? Paul said, I am now ready to be offered. You know what he was saying? I'm ready to go to chopping block. Hmm? He said, hey, everybody else forsook me, but nevertheless the Lord stood with me. Uh, Paul said, I've already got a glimpse of what he's got on the other side. He said, I'm ready to go. And John said, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I'm ready to go too. Huh? What I'm trying to say is with friction comes grace. So regardless of the friction, he's still God. And he's got a whole lot more grace than they got friction. Let me say this lastly. Some of you are about to pass out. 
regardless of the future, he's still God. And I know in the ultimate future we win. I've done read the back of the book. But we don't know what a day brings forth. But he does. He's God. And regardless of the future, he's God. Now let me throw this out there. So what are you going to do about it? See, you can't wait till the future to serve God if you're not serving Him now. You can't wait till friction comes to make up your mind which side you're on. You better make up your mind right now which side you're on. Hmm? Regardless of the future, He's God. The real question is, is He your God? Is he your not only personal Savior, is he your Lord? Have you got that thing settled? Now, I didn't watch much of the Bengals game, but I watched enough of the Bengals game to be thankful that I didn't pay $180 tickets to sit down there and watch that mess today. I'm going to tell you right now why the Bengals got humiliated today. None of their starters played in any of the preseason games. Now, it's been a long time since I played ball. Forty-something years. But reporters still remembered me, didn't they? Yeah, you hated every minute of that. First time she got interviewed by a reporter, all they wanted to talk about was dad. Huh? Brother Mike, you'll remember this. They used to teach us this. You play like you practice. Right. Hmm? Hey, when you're playing baseball, you'll be no better in a game than when you practice. If you're lazy in practice, you're going to be lazy in the game. Hmm? If you don't concentrate on how to hit the ball in practice, you ain't going to hit it in the game. If you're trying to catch butterflies instead of fly balls, you're not going to catch a fly ball. We, we on the same page? Huh? Practice pays off. The Bengals didn't practice. The offensive line stunk. This offensive line, they spent millions of dollars on to protect Joe Burrow. I think they got sacked six or seven times. No different than last year. Why? They didn't practice. Oh, they practiced in, you know, shorts, but not in game situations. They weren't used to hearing his name out there on the field when the crowds are yelling. They weren't used to listening to him checking down and changing the offense. Uh, and they was all messed up. And the great rookie that was supposed to be uh, uh, wonderful at left guard uh, looked like me out there trying to block Hayward. Huh? You say, what are you saying, preacher? They weren't prepared because they didn't practice all summer. They thought they could just turn it on when the lights came on. Friend, if you're not serving God today, when the lights come on, you won't be serving him then either. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Every day is a test run for your faith in Jesus Christ. Hmm? You, you can't Amen. wait till it's time to, uh, uh, for him to show up and get right. right. No, you can't wait till the enemy comes and say, okay, I'm going to stand in the gap and make, make up the hedge. No. You know what I find in the Bible? You know who God always called and who God always used and who God always blessed? People that was already doing it. He used normal, ordinary people that was active, that wasn't sitting around being lazy. And those are the ones he used. Hmm? Some were fishermen. Some were tax collectors. Some were physicians. They all had different degrees. But they were active in doing something, but they already knew enough about the Lord. When he showed up, they believed on him. You know who God uses today? people that are active people that are already serving him people that already love him people that already know he is God people that are waiting around for something special from God well I'll do it when God shows up tells me to do it well he's never going to show up tell you anything but if you got your nose in the book every day and you're praying every day and you're being a light every day and you're loving him every day and you're, you're putting one foot in front of the other for him every day guess what when trouble comes, you don't have to worry about God being there. He's God. Hmm? So is He your God? Are you serving Him? Are you faithful?
when everybody else isn't being faithful are you still faithful because your eyes aren't on them your eyes are on him that's the key as long as you've got your eyes on him nothing else matters because he's God and he's a faithful God and he's a true God and he'll love you and bless you to, in your generation to a thousand generations because he's God the night I'd sure make sure he's my God because you don't know what tomorrow holds. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I'll just hang out with him. Uh, I've only been saved 48 years. And can I say he's been good to me. Amen. I have no complaints. I have no sad tales to tell. I, I can't uh, tell you all these sad stories about how God failed me and all that. Nope. All I can tell you is God's been good. Yeah. And he's been everything he said he'd be. And 10,000 times more. He's God. And tonight, maybe you need to come say, Lord, I know you're, you're my Savior, but I want to make sure that you're my Lord. Maybe tonight, you've been walking with him, and he's been so good to you, you just want to come tell him thank you. Maybe tonight, you just want to come tell him you love him. Maybe tonight, the Lord's just put somebody on your heart. It's right be going through a tough time. And during the invitation, you might want to slip out and go over and just hug their neck and say, I just want you to know I appreciate you. You never know what a word fitly spoken, how to impact somebody's life. And maybe God wants to use you in that capacity. Maybe the Lord's put somebody in your heart that's not saved and, or somebody's out of church and you got a burden for them. You need to come pray for them. I don't know what the need is, but I know he's God. And if he tells you to do anything, you do it. You be obedient to him. And no telling how he'll bless. All right, so let's all stand, Brother Ray. Come get a song of invitation. He's God tonight. I've tried him. He's faithful and true. Folks are coming. Brother Ray's getting a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for these dear folks. They've learned that you're God, and they put you first in their lives. Lord, if there's somebody here tonight struggling with that a little bit, Lord, I pray you'd help them. Lord, if there's somebody here tonight that, Lord, struggling with something else, I pray that, Lord, you'd snuggle up close to them and help them with that. Lord, if there's somebody seeking, I pray they'd find the answer in Christ. Lord, if there's somebody here that's low, I pray you'd lift them up. Lord, if there's somebody that's in the valley, I pray they'd see you're the lily of the valley. Lord, whatever the need is of somebody's heart tonight, Lord, I pray that, Lord you'd meet that need and God I pray for somebody really down tonight you'd send somebody by their way just be an encouragement God I just pray you'd have your way in this invitation we certainly pray if there's anybody unsaved lost without God Lord I pray they'd come and get saved tonight Lord bless this invitation now speak to hearts we will not fail to bless you for what you do for it's in Jesus name we pray Amen did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.